Yo, yo, what up, my beautiful dowdies? How's everyone doing today? I'm your host, Fowl. Let's talk about the new tier list update. Crywin.gg updated their tier list with the new 2.3 patch. There's a lot of things that actually got changed, so I'm very excited to go over it with you guys with the release of Firefly and the rerun from Ron May, of course. The tiers are the Apex character T0, T0.5, meta characters T1, T1.5, T2, niche characters tier 3 and tier 4 and then the forgotten ones t5 so instantly in the first row t0 we got some big changes for the damage dealings not that much changed still acheron top of the food chain very very good you know it, she is up there no one's complaining about that she's very very good and she's just the best t0 and a half still agree with this Dan Heng and Jing Liu are now on the same level, in my opinion. Jing Liu has a way better ground to stand on. You know, her feet are on the ground way stronger. Dan Heng, however, has a little bit less of a strong ground to stand on, but he can skyrocket up. And I always compare these two to stairs and an elevator. Jing Liu just takes steps slowly on stairs and slowly becomes stronger. However, Dan Heng, with the right team setup and the right investment, can just click on a certain floor and he instantly goes with the elevator up and they're around the same level in my opinion at this current stage of the game very good damage dealer still so that's why of course they're in t zero and a half then t1 dr ratio uh the t1 and t2 category for the for the damage dealers is always a bit of an awkward one in my opinion because there's so many different things to take here. these characters are really yeah the damage dealer category for this side is always a bit awkward in my opinion but i i agree that dr ratio can be t1 He's very good. Now, every patch, you know, every update, we're almost getting a new follow-up attack synergist character. So he's always getting a lot of love. So T1, I 100% agree. T1 and a half. Now, here it becomes a little bit questionable and a bit awkward, right? Clara, Jingyuan, Xingxue, and Zayla. I think it is still fair to put him in here. But, however, the reason why they're here is, I think, for Zayla and Jing Yuan, it's just a little bit of how clunky they are, right? Zayla's resurgence, you know, is, is a bit awkward nowadays, and Jing Yuan is just awkward to use with the follow-up attack, and still a bit clunky from day one. These Zayla just fell off because of the, you know, the hunt and all the killing the little mobs is a bit harder to get her full kit online. So I understand why they're here, but they're still very good. And I think both of them require a lot of investment. And the more investment you put in these characters, the stronger they get other, more than other characters, right? If you put a lot of investment in Blade, Zayla is going to have a way different high investment cap than Blade. Blade is very straightforward with higher investment. He just gets more damage. His kit is very straightforward and easy. However... The higher investment and better Zayla gets, her, she works in a way where she actually gets way better and skyrockets then. Because if you can one-shot something to proc resurgence, the flow of the game is completely changed. And then, for instance, like zero cycling would be a completely different ball game, you know? So, and Jingyuan is still the same boat as well. Like, these characters just require a lot of good team and high investment. And then, with those high investments, they, are, they function way different and better than certain characters. So, that's why I'm still okay with them being here. And because they're so high investment, they're not up here because it takes a lot of time and effort to get these online. Then Clara and Xing Shui is just the same thing. She's just too RNG, so she cannot be more up because even with Sparkle, in my opinion, there's just sometimes if you get really unlucky, it's just awkward. So yeah, she she does a lot of damage, but the RNG, the gambling, the gambling just cannot she cannot go up, you know. And then Clara, Clara's a bit of a weird one. Uh Clara's pretty good. But I don't know if Clara fits there. Maybe Clara is in T2, but I'm okay with T T1 and a half as well. I can see that. T2 Blade though. Um I don't know. Blade is 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 falling off a little bit. I, I have seen, you know, this the, there's been speculation and, and people have been clearly showing that he is starting to fall off a little bit with the new setup. However, Blade is extremely flexible and he's very good still. You know, you can go full HP, you can crit blade, break blade now as well is really good. You can go solo DPS, duo DPS, sub DPS. Basically, you can extremely good character just put on any team and he will pop off with that. And I think Blade's best. The thing is with Blade, I think people treat him wrong. I don't think Blade is a hyper carry. Blade is a sub DPS, you know, or a breaker. Same thing with like Himiko. I think people are playing him wrong. If you have Jing Liu as a main carry and then you have Blade as a secondary carry, you know, like a main DPS is not really his role and, and, and I don't think it ever was his role, but that's my opinion. So I think T2 is, is okay. Then Argenti, Himiko, 
Misha and Serval in T3. Now, first of all, I'm just going to go over Serval. Serval and Jing Yuan have been a little bit of a in a beef recently, you know, the last few uh, months because there's apparently Serval can clear faster than Jing Yuan. So that Jing Yuan is up in 1.5 and Serval is not is weird. So or Jing Yuan has to be actually be bumped down then or Serval has to be bumped up if she actually is statistically speaking and factually, you know, stronger than Jing Yuan or is, has a more faster clear time so that's a bit awkward but for me for what i've seen with serval i guess it's okay here argenti and himiko uh, argenti i have to admit after more weeks and more stuff with argenti i'm starting to understand why he's being in the niche category however i still think he's strong and i still think he deserves t2 and himiko is now being buffed of course she got bumped up from t4 so i still think that himiko can also be in t i think both of these can be sit here with blade that's my opinion though because i think they have a lot of value and you have to just place him in the right team setup and stop making like himiko also a hyper carry misha then yeah sure i think his misha category is pretty good because you have that freeze composition thing t4 i think young ching needs to be at least tier three it's too low for me and then the rest sure they're not like that great and then the forgotten ones arlon and <laughs> physical <laughs> trailblazer i understand as well now the big one the specialists i'm still a little bit confused by boot hill and firefly are now because they're breakers which i understand that however i think they're also pretty good damage dealers but i'm okay with them being here firefly now the new one of course in t0 firefly being an extremely strong character extremely easy to build applies fire weakness herself has a lot of damage very smooth really good on e0 Really good free to play light cones. I understand why she's here. She's very strong and I think she deserves to be the T0 because there's just so many factors here that make her on the same tier as the other characters here, you know? Then on T0 and I have Black Swan, Kafka and Butil. I agree with this as well. I think these are extremely good characters. Kafka and Black Swan are of course a combo here, but they're very good characters nonetheless. Butil is a little bit a step behind of Firefly. I understand this as well. We've been talking about this for a very long time on my channel. Just, you know, the special treatment of fireflies bias and just boot hill always being one step behind but he's still top you know very good so he's still t0 and a half although fireflies is a little bit better you know she deserves to be up here and they deserve to be here then t1 topaz 100 agree as well topaz very good character very good synergistic character for follow-up attacks so 100 t1 at the same tiers as these characters 100 agree then we have nothing in t0 and a half which i'm going to instantly say something that i think Someone should be there. T2. Luca, Sampo, Shuei. Nothing too special. Nothing too crazy. 100% agree. Then T3. Welt and Gonaifan. I still think Welt needs to be T1 and a half. Welt can literally do everything in the game. It can be a main DPS, sub DPS, supportive unit with action delay. It can be a sustainer. You can go break Welt. You can go speed Welt. You can go like damage Welt. Welt can like almost do it all. And because of that flexibility, and it is pretty good what he did when he does it i think he needs to be up here and i think that is very valid so not not in a niche category niche is literally if you have one little thing he does everything so it's literally opposite of niche right so i think he should be there but gunaifen sure i can agree with that t4 these couldn't be bumped up to t3 i think break is becoming a insanely strong thing so sushan gets to be bumped up and this character can be very synergistic with Akron. So with the light cone on it, you know, when you apply debuffs with the fire DOT for preservation, it's okay to have him here. And nothing in the forgotten ones. Then the amplifiers. Ranmei, 100,000%. Thank you. Finally, they realized now with the break meta, it's a bit annoying that they only do it with the break meta because she was before the break meta. Also up here, you know, she was 100% an apex character all the way on top. But now it's okay. We finally have her here. So I'm happy because her being down with Robin and Sparkle and stuff was not okay. She was way better and... She deserves to be up there. You know, there's no one that does what she does at her level and her ease of use. And she does have the same level as Firefly and Akron, I think, you know. Yeah, so these three are 100% at the same level and just crazy strong, you know. Then T0 and a half. Robin, Sparkle, and now the Imaginary Trailblazer got bumped up. Very interesting to see, actually. Robin and Sparkle, 100% T0 and a half. The Imaginary Trailblazer is actually interesting and I, I, I kind of understand why... I, why they're there and i would have been okay with them being a t1 as well however i'm okay with them being a t0 and a half because it's just such a crazy unit and, and just it it just boosts all the break comps up 
by a hundred percent and the super break is just too valuable so i understand why do i why they're here so i'm okay with that t1 ting yun still very good you know buff energy extremely valuable character very very needed and very key components for a lot of energy heavy team compositions and extremely valuable so 100 percent that's why she's there t1 and a half Branya, pela and silver wolf i also agree with these three Branya's a little bit uh, took a fall of course but i understand why she's here although Branya's still a very good character it's just that the value of these characters are not just such a different ball game that she just falls off a little bit, but she's still very good because, of course, she's still a meta character. So I'm okay with her being here with Pela and Silverwolf. Of course, Pela and Silverwolf is also another battle as well. A lot of people think Silverwolf might be better or a lot of people think Pela is better. Hey, pause the video right now. Over 90% of you people that watch my videos actually are not subscribed to my channel. It would mean a lot to me if you would actually consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind after. Let's continue with the video. I do think the overall strength of Silverwolf is, is really, really, really good and better maybe. However, the AoE and the defense threat from Pela is just AoE against single target, you know? And of course, Silverwolf has more complexity in her kit where she can apply the, the debuff for every element and things like that. However, I do think I'm okay with them all being in here. T2, nothing. And then T3, we have Asta and Hanya. I think that you can put these... Uh, I think at least Asta T2. Because Asta is very good for DOT. And now with Firefly, she's actually pretty decent as well. Speed boosting. Fire support on top of that. You know, it's just very... I think she's at least T2 right now. Hanya and Yukong, I think, can be both in T3. Or the Kimi Bobi may be in T2 as well. Because there are have some very good niche categories. And the, the, the Yukong is not T3 because Yukong is very strong if you build her correctly. Because she's a bit clunky, of course, with how she works. But if you make it work, then it could even be T2 or very strong. However, I think both of them can be tier 3. Then nothing in the Forgotten Ones. Then, very weird this one. In my opinion, a bit controversial, but sustain T0 Aventurine. Let me tell you why this is wrong and this is incorrect. Aventurine is not on the same level as Ron May, Firefly, and Acheron. Aventurine does not come even close to their strength and their value. He is very good, but he's not better than Ho Ho or Fu Xuan, you know? He needs to be bumped down to T0.5. That's what I think. I don't know why Fu Xuan got bumped down and Aventurine didn't, which is extremely weird. Is I think because the follow-up attack synergies, but... I think they kind of have the same value. They just have more niches then and they do things differently. But I do think they're kind of around the same level. And I understand that Aventurine can be better in some cases. However, Schwan can be better in some cases. And in my opinion, Ho-Ho is the better one out of the three in general. Because Ho-Ho, I made a video about this on my channel as well. The higher investment that your characters are, the better Ho-Ho gets. Because let's say, take Fushuan for instance. Fushuan gives crit rate. If you would have a Dunhang with 100% crit rate and 200% crit damage, you would rather have a Ho Ho for more attack percentage, for more actual more damage, and then ult up time, you know, stuff like that, to actually bring Dunhang even further up as a damage leader. With Fu Xuan, there's just a limit cap. At some point, Fu Xuan can't do more. Same with Aventurine. However, Aventurine does have that follow up attack synergies. That's why I just do think that he needs to be bumped down, and he's at the same level. He's at the same level as these. No way. He's that much better I'm be in the same level as these, you know? So, Gallagher, though, got bumped up, which is very good because I understand. Gallagher is actually extremely good. It, it's really cool to see. E6 Gallagher, 100% with the break meta and stuff, is very valuable, very good character. So, I, I agree with this, actually. But only eventually needs to be in the same tier as these guys. T1, we have Luocha. Yes, Luocha still very good. Very good healer, very comfortable. However... That only does that, you know, that doesn't bring any more anything more to the table. So they he doesn't even come close to all of the things that they can do. So 100% T1. Then we have nothing in T1 and a half, which I disagree with. I think that, I mean, Japart can even be in T1 in my opinion. Because the, if you build him correctly, the shield uptime, and he's very flexible with like, also the DOT light cone. You can go put him in Kafka Black Swan, even in Ekaron. And you have that freeze from his skill. He can then uh, take more hits himself. And then he can rest himself if he does fall. Very good character in my opinion. And he's a bit slept on. So at least he won and a half. However, I do think that Jabard and Loarch are on the same level. That's my opinion though. But I'm okay with him being in T1 and a half. He's not T2. No way. 
Lynx needs to be in the niche. Leech is over, right? The Lynx train is over. T3, niche, for Clara and Blade and stuff. Or if you need an AoE cleanse, if it's very AoE heavy, like the three new enemies that we have, you know, those three uh, music robot thingies in the right situation, you know? So, niche. Bailu can be tier 2 for me, because I do think Jabard is better than Bailu, because the flexibility of him, and she doesn't have a cleanse, you know? So, it's a bit awkward. Although, I'm also okay with her being in T1.5, but, you know, T2 is, is sure, you know? T4, yeah, March and Tasha, sure. Couldn't even be bumped up a little bit, maybe, but I'm okay with it. So, the overall glance is pretty good. Then, for the Pure Fiction, this one is always very accurate, and they never fail to amaze me with this one, because the Pure Fiction one is, like, almost spot on. T0 for uh, Horda, damage dealers, 100%. These two, yep. Just not as not as crazy as Horda. You know, Horda goes hard in Pure Fiction, but still very valuable. T1, agree with this as well. Just less than this, but still very good. Clara still has that AoE, very nice. T2, then we're starting to go to the characters that don't really have the AoE, but still can function in a way, or are a little bit less impactful, like Serval. Yes, very good. Tier 3, yep. And then we go to the hunt characters, and then we don't care anymore. Then, specialist Apex characters, 100,000% like Swan up here. Crazy, her passive with her technique, you know, goes very hard. Kafka, still very good, just a little bit less valuable, because Black Swan can literally go in every single comp. Put them together, though, you're going to have a very good time. T1, Firefly. I can see why she's here because she does attack a lot and she just has she makes sure that you can kill a lot of stuff efficiently so i can understand why she's here but maybe t one and a half because she doesn't have that aoe but i'm okay with that for now t2 yep sure and then you know we're going to the hunt characters and we don't care about that t0 100 these two these buff all the team members and she brings everyone up and she buffs everyone more break and yeah makes 100% sense that that they're both here sparkle t0 and a half makes a lot of sense doesn't do the same thing as them because she doesn't have that white party buff you know that dual or triple dps capabilities however she is still very strong for that hyper carry on your team as she can help you out tremendously sp friendly as well of course t1 i understand this as well Good support if you just pay that defense threat aoe can break shields ting yun again ult uptime and stuff like that very good then, of course, Trailblazer, Super Break, we need that, so very good that, is that, that it's there. I agree with this as well. Then 1.5, sure, I agree with this. Not the greatest, though, Bronya, but still some value, that's why she's there. Same with Asta, you know. Could do some stuff, but not at the level of these guys. And then Tier 3, and yeah, I understand this. Yukong, however, can actually be very good, though, in my opinion. If you put her correctly, she's, I think, at least T2, because of the buff she gets with crit rate and crit damage can actually be very interesting now t0 eventually in a hundred thousand percent though because he keeps attacking he keeps her team alive and he's just dealing damage while he does it and in pure fiction that is extremely valuable so 100 he's better than the rest here for that reason in pure fiction t0 and a half though yes i agree with these as well same concept just do all more than just sustaining and are very valuable you know just ho ho is basically a harmony character gallagher does damage and buffs break she gives crit and also has an AoE ult. Makes sense. Same with Wo. She also has an AoE ult. Keeps your team alive, but doesn't do it at the same level as them. And then, yeah, the other sustainers are really bad. <laughs> you don't really... Normally, you don't even want to put sustainers in Pure Fiction if you can just have another damage dealer, you know? So, how the format works, it is like that. So, Pure Fiction is kind of spot on. Very good. And my Memory of Chaos is uh, a first for a first glance and getting... Relatively good information. I still think this is a relatively good overall thing. Maybe a little bit of mistakes here and there, but it's a very good overall glance. And soon we're going to get Apocalyptic Shadow, the new game mode. They're probably going to add a new one here with the other two, which is going to be extremely exciting. And I'm very excited to see what characters are going to be good there. So make sure to check that out. We're going to go over that as well when that tier list comes out. Hope everyone enjoyed this video. Let me know what you agree with or disagree with the tier list. And... I would love to hear you guys' takes on this. Make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. It means the world to me if you can do that. Make sure to join the Discord. We're trying to grow the community even further. And if you want to support the channel even further, then become a member. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Peace.